How do you make an equation, table, and graph from a description? So we'll use this scenario. Joan's aunt agrees to give Joan $500 to buy a used car, as long as Joan pays back $50 per month. In this lesson, you will learn how to create an equation, table, and graph by using a contextual situation. Let's review. The slope-intercept form that we are most accustomed to seeing with a linear function is y equals m times x plus b, where m and b are the two uh, numbers in question, m being the slope or the rate of change, and b is our y-intercept, the initial value. Now, that doesn't always have to be in this order. Uh, it can be b plus or minus m times x, uh, just as long as we understand that m, the slope, is the multiplier. Uh, the coefficient, and b is the constant value that's either added or subtracted. So if we have an example, negative 1.5x plus 2, negative 1.5 is the slope, that's our coefficient of our independent variable, and the y-intercept or the initial value is 2, so the value of the y, the dependent variable, when x is 0. A common mistake uh, an ice cream cup is $2 plus 50 cents for each additional topping. Common mistake is to think the initial value is 50 cents uh, when you see a contextual situation. Um, it's important, but it's not the one that is the initial value. The initial value only happens once. So ask yourself which one of these only happens one time, and that's the easy way to sort it out. So back to our problem. Uh, Joan gets $500 from her aunt, and she has to pay back $50 per month. So we learned that the slope indicator words, per was one of them, so if, you, if, if it's something per month, that's going to happen on a monthly basis, so that is going to be our slope. And so I interpret this as our slope being positive 50. I'll explain in a minute. So the y-intercept, or the initial value, because Joan's aunt gives her $500, that is a one-time thing. She doesn't keep giving her $500. It just happens once, and Joan has to pay it back. Um, so I interpreted this as negative 500 because Joan is now in debt to her aunt by $500, and she's going to pay um, or climb back towards zero uh, $50 per month. It could have been interpreted as a positive y-intercept. So Joan receives $500. She now has $500 positive, and she's going to pay back $50 per month. But I thought that was a little off because she's buying the car, so she really doesn't have $500 anymore because she's buying a car. So I, I interpreted this as the y-intercept being negative $500, and she's going to pay back, or a positive $50 per month. So the equation that we're going to build, we know the slope, we know the y-intercept, we use our y equals mx plus b formula. Uh, we can replace m and b, so we have y equals 50x minus 500. Now we're going to look at building the numeric representation. At zero months, we know that she hasn't paid anything back, so she still owes $500. And at one month, she's down. Uh, she's paid back 50. At two months, she's paid back $100 so far. And at three months, she's paid back $150. The y-intercept is negative 500, and we can use a subtraction of consecutive values to find out what the slope is. And we're also going to build the graph. So we find the scale uh, to fit it all on the graph. We find the y-intercept first. So the, the easy way, or I guess the more, the way that's going to help build the graph is if you can identify one point you know is going to be on the graph. And as long as you can say what happens at zero when the months are zero, it's negative 500. So let's locate that point first, and then we'll locate points built off of that point. So at zero months, the, she has negative $500. She has to pay back $500. After one month, she should have paid back $50. So this would be one month, comma, negative 450. Going from that to a negative 400 for another month. So if, as long as we have a few points, we can make our graph and show the relationship uh, in picture form. So in this lesson, you've learned how to create an equation, a table, and a graph by using a contextual situation.